So, before I've got a few slides as in, an introduction before presentations from Bid Teams. Um, can we first of all know, who, reveal who is here from a Bid Team or what Bid Teams exist? So, can we? Can you shout out who you are for representing? Cape Town. So one from Cape Town. Montreal. Montreal. Anyone else? Any last-minute bids coming in? Ah, uh -huh. and Paris is on its way. I see some local, possible local community over there. Okay, so we can say Cape Town heads heads. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that at the end of the slides, it makes it more amusing. Uh, yeah. yeah. You can help me with that because I'm really confused. So shall I just start anyway? Yeah. Because, so let's start because um, <laughs> Paris are late, they probably can figure out what's happening anyway. So, most information to do with the DevConf bids or DevConf 16 information is on the DevConf 16 wiki page. So, I guess lots of you have your laptops and you can go on there and start adding alternative, alternative bids or whatever you want to do. It's a wiki. Um, it has links to various useful information. I'll just very quickly run through a couple of things now. This is the, the DevConf goals, which are given in more detail on the DevConf website. Um, so if you're thinking of doing a bid, you should read the full version of these, not just the headings, and think about that as you prepare your, oh, well, as you continue to prepare your bids. Um, we, when, we, when we agreed these a few years ago, we split things into primary goals, which were to enable face-to-face -face interactions, but also, importantly, providing talks and video. Um, lots of people can't make it to DevConf, we still want to serve them. And providing time to work on Debian. And then we gave a secondary goal, so they're kind of important, but not what completely decides things in the first place, to motivate contributors and to motivate the local community in the place where we hold DevConf. Um, in extremely brief version, the, since we have three presentations to come, the DevConf bid process, which you can find in extreme detail linked from the wiki page, is that later this year, sometime to be agreed, we would have um, more, f more official submission of the bids in some kind of document form. Um, that's normally documents on the wiki rather than anything else. Um, following that, once we move forward, we have a, a first meeting where we talk to the bid teams and agree stuff. And then some amount of time later, again, this is all varies a bit from year to year, depending on what we try to push, um, we have an actual meeting and make a decision. And in that meeting, we can either just decide someone is obviously the winner, or we, if it's somehow there's a kind of half the people each way, then there's a group of people who will make a final decision on that, who are the people called the DevConf Committee. Um, I believe some of them are in this room. Maybe the DevConf committee people can embarrass themselves by standing up for a moment or waving or something. Marga says no, but that probably tells you she's one of them. I don't know who else we have in here from here. I, well, yeah, another one. DevConf chair is a kind of automatically DevConf committee. Then, yeah, Tiago here. And there's, again, you can find the full list on the um, wiki. I won't bore you by going through everything just now. Again, if you are from a bid team, you should speak to us or speak to the relevant parts of Debian on th things that you need for that. Um, one of the bids I know already has set up a bid mailing list. On yeah, on oh uh, yeah, a te a boring point to mention for those of you not yet involved is we are migrating the DebConf lists to list.debian.org. So if you create if you want a new list, then just behave like you normally would for a Debian list, don't do anything strange. Um, um, and the DevConf wiki you can probably find, and DevConf RSC channels are a kind of our regular way of communication, f as in much of the Debian project, for non-official kind of stuff. So if you just want to ask a question, sure, you can e email DevConf team, for example, and ask it, but you can also jump onto RSC and see if someone's around just to um, have a chat at the time. So, not delaying things further, um, let's have the pre bid presentation. So we, uh, we just agreed a uh, method of deciding the order of the bids, presentations, which obviously is the most important thing. So we're going to put the bids alphabetically, which means Cape Town, Cape Town Montreal, and Paris, we believe. 
and we will toss a coin twice and generate four bits, or sorry, two bits from this. If it is, if the answer is tails, tails, we will discard it and retoss. So give me a moment here. <laughs> so we have tails first. And tails again, so we retoss. Heads. You're tossing it back. And tails. So that's the so that's the uh, that's the second second bed, which was Montreal. Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clap. Ah. Oh, wait, so it looks like a problem. Did you realize where you were coming? Did you realize I was asking for video? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Can you send the time? I didn't really have. Ah. <coughs> yes, so the, the format is 10 minutes for each bid to talk and explain their bid. Please. So 10 minutes for each bid, one after the other, and at, at the end we will have uh, questions and answers. Uh, we cannot delay this much, as you can imagine, because it's a uh, Another talk that my people, some people might want to see later. All right. So how does that work? As that goes below your ear. I don't know how. Um, and I don't know how to use that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, okay. <laughs> doesn't really matter. So I'm here to kind of generate interest on uh, having DebConf in Montreal. And I realize that for some people that may be a bit uh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where is it? Which one? Mm. August. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea to really install it. Yeah, it's just I don't know how to do it. Uh, pull it back. The whole thing goes behind you. Show me. I think this way. Oh, uh, this way? All right. The whole thing behind the problem is not really that, but uh, speak no, 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 where the, the speaker thing. is. Don't do that. The whole thing will oh. <laughs> be high. Screw yeah. this. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yay. So um, I still, I think I'd save you from from that and. Maybe we could just still do it in around the same time as this year. Uh, so Montreal, lots of food and drink. It's totally not an issue. Um, most things are walking distance. It's it's a pretty small island. It well small. It's big, but it's still things are still within lo uh, local distance. Um, there's many options for accommodation. One of the some of the things that I looked into were uh, UCAM and actually university residents. Um, and there is a vibrant uh, free software community. So this is actually one of the places I thought about and I've actually reached out uh, quickly to the UCAM people and they would be interested in having um, DebConf there. So basically UCAM is the University of Quebec at Montréal, um, centrally located, it's, it's directly downtown. Um, the venue is accessible. Like I said, great food, great good network. We have a local archive. Um, craft beers nearby, like seconds away, literally. Um, one interesting thing is, assuming there be bad weather, it doesn't mean we actually have to go outside in the big blue room. Um, and other venues are are possible. Uh, I know about the Crims, the center for computer science research in Montreal and that's also a very nice location um, and there are possibly others so as for maybe having fun in Montreal there's lots of things rental bikes assuming they don't go bankrupt before that um, Mount Royal which is a very nice place right in the center of Montreal um, botanical garden the natural museums like planetarium insectarium everything and uh, shows and festivals because Assuming that conf would happen again around the same time as right now, um, that's right after the festivals. There are still lots of things going on. It's a lot of fun. There's always activities outside. And another cool place is uh, St. Helen Island, where there's a beach theme park and, again, shows and uh, festivals outdoors. 
So um, that's basically bike paths um, on the Montreal Island, uh, a view of the uh, Mar uh, on of Mont Royal, and a view of the Botanical Garden. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so Paris is the next one then. Who's going to talk, guys? Uh, we, don't have to talk. We, can, we can have both. You want to install this one then? So put this in the here. It's red. <laughs> so, hi everyone, uh, and thanks for being here for the bits from the French Cabar. So, we actually have a rock solid <laughs> local team. We have a French trusted organization. And in the past six years, we did three successful mini dev conf in 2010, 2012, and 2014. So obviously, we need to do something in 2016. So let's look at some venue options. We can go into Corsica. So this is the venue right here. <laughs> we can go in Lyon, but. Uh, Luca had that ID, so you should ask him for the details. <laughs> we can also go to Tunisia. Uh, we have a sec <laughs> secret cunning plan. But, well, to be more realistic, we can go to the Paris suburbs. And this is the venue, right? Yeah, this is the venue. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are the good things about Paris? Well, the location, location, location. You love the people, you love the language. Vous aimez l'euro, vous aimez les grèves, and more importantly, you love le bubule. <laughs> so we have a plethora of potential sponsors in Paris: Mozilla, EDF, mm. Evolix, Logilab, Yal. Actually, we have Creative too. Michael <laughs> said, "Yeah, sure." We have Smile. We have INRIA, we have the Ile-de-France region, we have, well, an incubator, and we have the Mairie de Paris. For the day trip, we do have a few options. <laughs> Cheese, wine, well, we know <laughs> a bit about those two. <laughs> what else? Well, there is no French cabaret. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so the question was, can we have it at the same time at the, as the Tour de France? I guess, maybe. But wait, seriously? We really have some venue options. Basically, we have universities or conference centers where we have contacts. And we really have a local team. I mean, the two masterminds are here, Mehdi and myself, and we have a lot of volunteers from past mini devconfs and other free software related events. Also, we have a whip. Ooh. And that's it. <laughs> so that's it for our presentation. So now the bit from Cape Town. Oh, this battery is flat, eh? No, no. Red light means flat. Oh, that was working. Do you want this? No. That's not right. Turn it around. No, that was the right, was the right way up. It doesn't go upside down. There's something like that. Okay. Uh, 
So there have been a few of us in Cape Town talking about hosting a DebCon for a while. Um, it's been mostly idle discussion because we thought it'd be a nice thing to do and we thought people might like to come to Cape Town. Um, but we've been, we put it in a bid last year and we never actually took it to completion. So maybe we can do that this year. Um, first reason why we need to do it is because people keep asking whenever I introduce myself where I'm from. It's obvious that when is a DebConf going to be in Cape Town? We haven't had a DebConf in Africa yet. I think it's probably about time. There are only five DDs in Africa, but we can work on that. Tunisia. Sorry? Tunisia, maybe? Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, we think Cape Town's very beautiful. It's got a lot of free software and Debian people in it. Uh, it and it's, very ni it's a cheap place to go out and drink and eat and enjoy life. Um, obviously, it'll be good for free software in Cape Town. Um, there are a few reasons why you might not want to have a DebConf in Cape Town. It's a bit of a pain to get there, um, but that same goes for us whenever we try to go anywhere, so maybe it's uh, <laughs> a fair response, yes. Um, there are three DDs in South Africa, and I'm not in South Africa anymore, so two. Um, but maybe this will help. Usually DebConf is around this time of year, which is winter, and unfortunately winter in Cape Town isn't that nice. Um, but if we get a nice week, it'll be great. There's no way of predicting that at all. There is some crime, but I wouldn't worry about that. We'll have DebConf out of the way somewhere, probably. And public transport in the city isn't fantastic, but thanks to the World Cup, we now have a bus system that's pretty good in the city. If we're outside of the city, it'll, it's going to be a lot more taxis and hired cars, I'm afraid. But this is Africa. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've had some ideas of where we could host a DebConf. There is a very small little institute of mathematical studies that could take about 100 people on the coast. Um, they're probably too small, but they have already said they would happily take it to DebConf. Um, there's the, the Cape Town University, which you can see in the background here, which is a spectacular um, campus with a great view, but it's a big university and ve very bureaucratic. The chance of getting unimpeded access to the network and dorm rooms when the students haven't been kicked out of them is fairly small. Otherwise, maybe we go to a small university town about 80 kilometers out of Cape Town in the Winelands. If we, we have some contacts there. If we can do that, that might be the best option. Um, that, that would mean d residence and drinking places and conference venues within walking distance of each other. Um, people. Uh, Alison and I are both here and supporting the bid, but neither of us actually live in Cape Town right now. I'm just moving away from Cape Town. There are a bunch of people in Cape Town who are keen, just how keen remains to be seen, but at least one of them has experience with running conferences and I think we can do something. Um, potential sponsors, Amazon and Oracle are both throwing money at everything they possibly can in Cape Town at the moment to try and hire people. Um, if you don't know, EC2 was started in Cape Town and they're now the biggest employer, Amazon's the biggest employer amongst geeks there by a mile. Um, but they burn people out, so <laughs> maybe. Um, a couple of, yeah, Oracle and, Pre and Precult has been sponsoring lots of open source related things like PyCon ZA. Um, there are lots of nice things to do. Uh, you can see Robben Island in the distance. It's well worth a visit. It's got penguins. Um, there's a, f a fantastic amount of hiking. Um, game reserves around Cape Town, not so great. You, you might see a giraffe if you're lucky um, and some tortoises. Um, a beach with penguins and wine, <laughs> wine farms. Um, we, I'm sure we can think of more great things to do as well. Wine farms. Um, Time of year would be a big consideration. It's kind of rainy from July to November, on and off. Winter in Cape Town is cold and wet, and no one has heating, so it's cold and miserable. Um, cold what? Uh, um, cold means about 8 degrees Celsius, but the rain goes sideways. Um, <laughs> 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 it's less than pleasant. Um, in, the, in, say, February, it's very hot and dry, but it's probably a bad time for DebConf because it would be too close to another DebConf. And it's tourist season, so you'd have to compete with Germans for beaches. <laughs> um, <You're gonna> <laughs> <lose that. laughs> 
So maybe we just take our luck and see what we can, what the weather is like. Um, any questions? Okay. No questions. So can the teams now come forward so we can they can take questions from the audience, please? So why you guys hold this to answer and I will be carrying the other one around. Cool. Uh, first question for the Paris team. Um, of course, DevConf 15 is going to be next year in Heidelberg, and uh, the traditional pattern is that we try to alternate continents and move it around between regions from year to year rather than doing it on the same continent twice. Um, what would you argue is the reason that we should break from this pattern and do it in Paris uh, as opposed to skipping Paris for 16 and having you reapply for 17? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, on the wiki there is also a bit for Prague, but I don't know if there would be any official proposal for it or not. Uh, about the question of, uh, for 16 or 17, yeah, we could. We just made the proposal because uh, Nicola and me were uh, have some time to organize the conference. We are not sure to have this time for later on. Uh, we have um, most of the volunteers we have are in Paris, so that's why the city makes more sense for us. And to complete the answer, uh, the pattern uh, didn't actually exist between DevConf Zero and DevConf One. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's low, which also means that France is already over quota, right? <laughs> Uh, from the Montreal bid, there was an important piece of missing information, which was the team. Could you please go into who do you think that would be helping you? Sure. Um, to be honest, uh, this is kind of um, my own initiative, but at the same time, I did approach a lot of people. Um, there's a few DDs in Montreal already. Uh, I know um, Anarchat is somewhat interested in helping out. Um, I know... Thiago and Tasia might help out as well, and there's um, <laughs> so I mean there's a lot of people who are definitely interested in helping out. I myself, uh, I'm, I mean I'm not a DD, but I I do have time, and I'm from Montreal, and I, I can do most of the stuff, and I have contacts with uh, university people. The I know the. Um, uh, the local computer science club is extremely interested in this, and I also have help from other people like Jean Schurger and others. So, yeah. The more important question for the Montreal bid where would we go on the day trip? Um, <laughs> that's one of the things I, I tried to show that. Um, so, I mean, Mount Royal is absolutely awesome. I know of a few other places for, like, pretty interesting hiking. I don't think it's quite the same as what I heard the uh, the hiking was this time, but um, there's Mount Saint-Hilaire. There's, like, very, very nice places. Mount Saint-Hilaire, for instance, is a, is a big park that's owned by McGill and is close enough that we can reach it fairly easily. Okay, well, for the three of the bits, uh, uh, we... Up, up to this year, we usually have a two-week uh, two uh, complete conference, and well, we, we will have to see what happens from next year onwards. Uh, what uh, duration of uh, DevConf are you considering? Uh, I mean, are you proposing uh, holding a, a week of DevCamp or uh, this uh, format we try this time? Do you know the previous format? Um, I, I do know the previous format. Actually, I would. I, I think this format worked quite well, and I, well, f at least my own opinion is that this would work, that would still work 
uh, very well for Montreal. I'd be perfectly fine with either format. Um, I haven't really considered that too much. So yeah, that's basically the same for us. Uh, we'd be fine with the two formats. I guess, depending on the venue and the money, uh, we could extend to further than 10 days, but I mean, it's to be defined, basically. Let's go ahead, Martin. Okay. Uh, I was curious specifically for the Cape Town bid. Uh, what are the entry requirements for the country, or generally, how difficult is it for people all over the world to enter the country legally? Um, as a visitor, <laughs> <laughs> illegally is fairly straightforward. I'm led to believe. Um, <laughs> Legally, it's fairly simple too. For many countries, you can come with a tourist visa that you can get on entry, I think. And uh, I've been there many times as an American. Uh, uh, sorry. So I've been there many times as an American. You get a pretty much an automatic three-month entry visa, and it's a pretty it's a long list of countries that have that access. Yeah. They are a little bit concerned about the neighboring African countries, so they make it harder for entry from there because they're afraid people are going to come in and stay illegally. But for most of the world, uh, they're they're very familiar with people coming as tourists, and that's what they expect. So they they don't have very heavy restrictions there. If we got any support from local government, that would probably help with the neighboring countries as well. Who was first? Matek. Question for Cape Town. Um, I believe there's South African Airlines. Yep. Do you think that you could establish contact with them and get them to sponsor? Because if we have 10 plus hours, that also means a lot more money for us to fly in. Um, uh, so if South African Airlines can stay afloat long enough. Um, <laughs> I have, no I have no idea. I don't have any contacts in the airline industry. I don't think anyone else does either. Uh, yeah. There are so several other airlines that fly to South Africa as well. Um, if I'm allowed, I'd like to ask a couple of questions to all the teams, which I will stack here quickly, because I think they're important to have everybody's answers to. First of all, how flexible are each of your proposals in terms of the date ranges for your target venues? Um, and secondly, um, uh, I at least I remember two of the teams listed prospective sponsors that have some local influence and it's possible that, uh, that all three of them did but uh, we found certainly this year in, in doing Depcom 14 that um, personal connections make a big difference for uh, for raising sponsorships and so to what degree do you view these as as, as strong prospects because you have you have someone you know to talk to versus um, them just being large companies doing open source in the area as I'm holding the microphone, I'll start by answering that. Um, we, our venues are still so op up in the air and the proposal is so vague that dates are variable. Um, we have contacts at some of the, well, the companies I mentioned, I got contacts at all of them. I probably, could probably get sponsorship and I assume their usual sponsors would also sponsor. Um, I, I'd say I agree with uh, the um, like usual sponsors that would most likely very much work. Uh, I know we have we have an office of Google in Montreal and I think we have some contacts there and we um, I mean at least in the computer science um, club at UCAM there's a lot of people with contacts in various free software companies so yeah. And the dates? Oh uh, the dates well um, for most of the summer, it's pretty much uh, fine. So basically, I don't know, uh, any time end of June until about this time. After that, it becomes a bit more of a problem because classes will start again. So I guess from the for the Paris bid, um, the well, it's maybe we don't know the people that can influence the sponsorship deci decisions, but we know the people that know the people, so it's not too far. I mean, it's, it would be, I think, pretty pretty fair to find out. Uh, yeah, to be more uh, precise, um, the companies we listed in our bid uh, are known to support uh, such conferences, and they already have, in France, actually, um, and we have contacts in uh, many of them, so we do expect at least some attention from them so to such conferences. And regarding the dates, I guess 
Yeah, so. regarding the dates, I mean, it will, uh, I think, depends on the venues. We didn't explore deeply uh, each uh, possibility yet, but uh, as we identified uh, mostly universities for now, it will be during the summer. It should be okay because many dorms will be almost empty, so we'll have uh, more possibilities. Yeah, so question to Cape Town. Um, you mentioned that the timing might be difficult, weather. weather and stuff. Did you consider having maybe a mini DEPCOM first to figure out how that would work? And maybe you could have it in at a, at a date which is not clashing with DEPCOM so much. So our plans after our um, failure to get a bid in last DEPCONF were to have a mini DEPCONF. <coughs> the difficulty is that I don't think there are enough people in the region to have a mini DEPCONF that's but particularly about Debian, and there are already a large number of local conferences about other software projects. We've got, a, I mean, all the languages have conferences. There are a handful of other conferences. So, host a Debian team sprint. It's a bit out of the way. Oh. <laughs> the question was uh, hosting a Debian team sprint. Sure, but it's good. It's an expensive place to host a sprint. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, looking at actually thinking of costs from all three of the bids, I mean, how would you rate, um, say, accommodation cost locally for you know both for the sponsored type of accommodation in dorms or what you know if you look at university or for local ho hotels? I mean, what kind of ranges are, are we talking? I don't have numbers on hand. <laughs> university dorms fairly cheap. Other accommodation as variable as you like, but dorms are fairly cheap. Yeah. Um I, I can't say very much more than that. Uh, it's in general, Montreal is fairly cheap. Um, I, I know we can get some kind of uh, group discount at a very, very great rate. Um, as for dorms, um, I know it would be cheap, but I seriously have no idea what it is right now. I need to look into it. So, for the university dorms uh, in the venues that we considered, I guess the price would be in the range of 150 euros for two weeks, something like that, maybe less, but max 150 euros. And for the hotels, I don't have any numbers. Uh, I guess that considering that uh, the venue would be uh, close by to some specific options, uh, we could possibly arrange some discounts or group group prices. Maybe. Well, a bit related to the uh, next to last question. Uh, several times in the past, it, it has been like uh, uh, pushed as a as a good thing for DevConf to be close to an interesting uh, uh, local or big uh, conference. Uh, uh, do you think uh, there's some other conference in the time of year? I, I know it's too nebulous right now, but uh, uh, some other conference we could either piggyback on or that, keep, uh, that can piggyback on us, right? That uh, can make, drive the prices down or maybe get a wider audience. So for Paris, I have no idea. Um, so around April, May, there's ScaleConf, which is a uh, computing, you know, software at scale conference, about two days long. And around November, there's PyCon ZA. Those are the two I would try and be back to back to. Neither of them particularly relevant. It's kind of too bad that uh, this is for 2016 and not 2015 because uh, I know there was at least PyCon in Montreal, uh, which could have gone very well with it. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I, there's lots of conferences in the U.S. in Canada. I, I agree there's much fewer, but it, it's something to look into. Any other questions?
So a slightly more silly question, maybe. Or maybe not, depending on your point of view. What's the local beer like? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, we have lots of craft beer. Um, Montreal is big on getting influence for beer making uh, from various, uh, from various uh, locations. Um, one of the one of the places I can uh, definitely talk about is the location that's right beside the UCAM. Uh, they make all their own, they make all their own beers. They have uh, stouts, uh, every every kind of beer you could think of. And another um, good place is well or well known place at least in Quebec is the Bistro des Bières Belges. I'm not <laughs> sure they could actually um, accommodate something as big as Debconf, but it's something to that I could definitely look into, and yeah, they have yeah. such a great <laughs> choice of, of beers, but... We're like right beside the left border, and if you Yeah. So if you'd asked me 10 years ago, I, I would have said that's feedback. Um, I would have said it's absolutely awful, but um, craft beer has been taking off in Cape Town in the last five years especially, and especially especially amongst developers and free software people, a lot of brewers. So there's one commercial brewer who would be vaguely involved in the bid team, and I'm sure he'd be interested in providing beer. Yeah. He, brews, he brews Belgian-style beers. So in France, I guess the good local beer is wine. Um, <laughs> so if you really need the bubbly stuff, I guess we are close enough from Belgium to get some good beers. Uh, well, I think that's it. We have a few breweries uh, near Paris. Uh, nothing really significant. We have seven minutes left. So certainly after organizing DevConf 7 and seeing Gunnar after um, DevConf 6, um, the probably I think the thing that's most underestimated is the amount of time it takes for one person to do uh, DevConf. Um, I certainly almost lost my job over it. Uh, I know some other people that have been certainly lost their partners or something as they left them because they're spending too much time doing DevConf. How much time do you do you think you have to do, and how much time do you think it will take? <laughs> Nobody wants this one. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> this is where I feel particularly bad because I've just left Cape Town, so it would probably be mostly on other people's shoulders. Um, I would, no, I would commit as much time as I could to it, and <laughs> I could imagine that being a, um, a good. I don't know what I should say on a live stream, but a couple of days a week at the most. Um, but it would it would require other people who are actually there to be doing that as well to succeed. Uh, no, no, she's she's a yes. Sorry, same team. Um, so I I've been for many years switching back and forth between Cape Town and the U.S. So I would take this as an excuse to spend about half my time in Cape Town that year. Um, and I do know what conference organization takes. <laughs> I did OSCON before I did DevConf. <laughs> Guess we can go. Um, so yeah, I don't think we underestimate the amount of time that it takes. I mean, uh, since we, since we emitted the idea of doing DevConf in France, a lot of people have told us, you're crazy, you shouldn't do it, never do it, it's not a good idea. But well, um, I guess in France we're lucky to have a lot of um, of days from work. Uh, <laughs> 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 and yeah, I guess foregoing weekends for two years is not that bad. And um, uh, after organizing the three mini dub camps, we. Uh, we've seen that there are many volunteers who can dedicate uh, some time for organizing conferences, and I think we can count on them to. Yeah, to put it off. Oh. 
So um, I agree, I don't actually have uh, any experience in making that kind of big event. Um, but I mean, uh, I have been <laughs> carefully re reorganizing my time and I know I could um, very easily spend at least 20 hours a week just dedicated to um, DebConf. Um, and then with the amount of interest and help that I expect that I see, well, with the amount of interest that I see in Montreal and of help that I know I can expect from some people, um, I, I'm sure it can be pretty easily split up and um, with my 20 hours and a bit of help is doable. Related follow-up question, and without getting into specific details on, on any particular organizer's relationship status, but to the extent that the primary organizers of each of these bids has a significant other, to what extent are those significant others on board with this plan? <laughs> so... <laughs> okay. She's aware of it, and... She said, "Cool," and usually she's use, and um, yeah, we're we're usually pretty uh, pretty much together on these kinds of crazy ideas. So good. Did you check? I did. Uh, Being single makes us really easy. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, she's not aware of it yet. <laughs> And we had uh, twins uh, two years ago, so I don't expect <laughs> any help from her, to be honest. Any closing question? Malkin? No. So I think Stefano for Cape Town has already done a fair job of listing all the negative points. Really good sales job there. Um, <laughs> what about the other bids, Paris and Montreal? What do you think are the downsides of each of your, your, of your bids? <laughs> um, I agree I'm largely inexperienced in these kind of big events and um, I can't really account for Although I, I know, um, for instance, Tiago and Tessia did mention that they w they could help, but um, not drive the the show, if you will. Um, and I know that most of the other people who I've approached who are interested also don't have a lot of experience. So I'd say that's um, that's definitely a, there's definitely a learning curve. So I think uh, one of the main uh, cons for Paris is the price. Uh, which would be probably steep. Uh, I guess that if the Swiss team managed it, we can. Um, and another issue that could be um, in Paris is that it's so easily reachable that it could become too big. So this is something we have to take into account when looking for venues because, well, we need to plan for capacity. Um, there, there was another downside I didn't mention, which is... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so lo um, large venues with, net, with decent internet are hard to find. So academic institutions have good bandwidth, other large venues might have a 4 meg DS DSL line and think that's really good internet connectivity. Um, <laughs> this, it's, it's difficult. So thanks for being honest.